Hello guys out there on Hello Today I thought I'm going to analyze the lyrics for the song The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel These lyrics analysis are only a, an exclusive thing that I give to the Patreons um, on my Patreon community but I thought that I would make a video for all of you guys and the reason being is that this song means a lot to me personally and I thought that I wanted to share this with all of you guys, not just you on Patreon. And I thought that I would make a video where I maybe show you another side of me, you know, um, not the super hype, positive guy that you often see uh, on this channel, but also the more serious and um, down-to-earth person that, you know, I am, but, you know, I have to <laughs> you often have more than one personality, right? And, uh, I mean, I guess you've seen that a bit in, for example, my, dis my reaction to Disturbed uh, Song of Silence, where, you know, um, it got very emotional for me and stuff like that, but I thought that I would at least tell you a bit more about myself and uh, and what this song means to me. So if, if you're not if you're not interested in. <laughs> hearing personal stuff about me, then you can head on over, you can skip uh, a minute or something like that to when I actually start analyzing the lyrics. Uh, but if you're interested, then by all means, <laughs> you can stay here. So, I've dealt with uh, depression for a long period of my life. It's quite difficult to say for how long. The, the family situation that I grew up in has in some ways been a bit dysfunctional and uh, a lot of the reasons why, I won't go into every detail you know because I don't think that you're that interested in it but um, my sister had a a big handicap, she was not really able to talk and she was not able to um, <sighs> to walk and stuff like that. Mentally uh, she probably um, had the mental state of maybe a third year old or something like that, or a second year old. Um, no, I think it's even less than that, maybe like a three-month-year-old baby or something like that. But of course she had the, the body of a, of a woman. Um, that's been very hard for my family um, in a lot of ways. especially for my mother, she, she had an issue with that because it was hard seeing, she always saw um, her daughter as a as her baby, you know and she's so when when she uh, you know, started to develop like breasts and stuff like that, it was very hard for her and you know, I 
it was a lot, it was hard in a lot of ways, and there there were issues like between in the family dynamic as well. But I won't really go into those details. But when I was, uh, I think about eleven or twelve or something like that, my sister um, had to go get to the hospital because. Uh, you know, we didn't really know how long she was going to live, um, and uh, <sighs> thankfully she lived for quite a while, um, and But I, I can't really remember, but I think it was 11 or 12 or something like that when she had to um, to get to the hospital because her her condition was very critical and I think she was about 16 or 17 at that time. And about that time period also my, my brother... Um, no, sorry. That, that happened a bit earlier, like when my brother was 16 or something like that, he he got some kind of a sickness that, uh, you know, he had pain in, in a lot of places in his body and stuff like that, and uh, I, won't, I won't talk that much about my brother because, you know, I don't That's not really something that you know. I don't. I don't want to, to say much about that. But he had to be at the hospital for a long time as well. And for a while, we might thought think that um, he was not going to make it. You know. And um, the same goes for my sister. And, uh, And my, when, when I was 13 years old, my, my sister passed away, and that was a weird period in my life. Um, and it was something that my mother was not able to handle. So she moved um, to a different place. and. Uh, me and my brother and my sister started living with my dad uh, instead and that was that was hard for pretty much everyone my brother was still sick and uh, and it was difficult for my dad you know having to take care of three children pretty much by himself and you know that impacted us in a lot of ways um, At that time, I had a lot of issues with with depression and stuff like that. And for me, I became a bit of an. I wasn't really able to talk about it because I didn't have any space in the family to do that, and I didn't trust people in that sense. I mean, I did to a certain extent, but those people kind of. I don't know if they were afraid, but they they had difficulties with um, 
with with my with my issues. There was really no one who could who was able to listen to me. You know. Okay, but the lyric analysis. So, hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I, because a vision softly creeping left his seats while I was sleeping. So yeah, for me that is uh, the darkness is uh, you know that you have another person inside you that is always telling you um, that you're not good enough, that you should have done better, you should have been there for the people that you love and you're good for nothing and stuff like that. Um, that is what I feel when when I've been depressed. It's that darkness has come and it's like almost like another person another side of you that is talking to you because a vision softly creeping left the seats when I was sleeping so in a lot of ways when I was listening to this song that, that this vision was a lot of the times me um, killing myself because I had a lot of suicidal thoughts and stuff like that so it's a it's a vision um, that has been creeping, you know, softly, and then it's been leaving these seeds and this vision, you know, then has still remained um, planted, you know, <laughs> inside my brain, um, but within the sound of silence and in that sense that I really didn't, wasn't able to talk about it that much about my depression and how I felt and stuff like that. In restless streams I walked alone, narrow streets of cobblestone, beneath the halo of a street lamp I turned my collar to the cold and damp. So for me, I, when I was feeling bad and I wanted to be by myself to, to get my feelings out, I always, you know, were out, like on the sidewalks and stuff like that, so I always think about that as, you know, walking there on the cobblestone or whatever, by myself in the darkness, you know. Neath the halo of a street lamp, I turned my collar to the cold and damp, when my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light to split the night and touch the sound of silence. Now for me, this... You know, these are my interpretations, and it's probably not what maybe they intended with the song, but you know, I'm just telling by from my experiences what I think for me personally is about. So, Neat the Halo of a Street Lamp, for me, that is like in a lot of the ways, ways where I could see the good things, you know, and maybe what I should do that is good for me. But I always turn my back, not always, but in a lot of ways I turn my back on that to the cold and damp, to the things that wasn't good. So, and I did mistakes instead of going to the light. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light that split the night. So for me that is, you know, something completely different. So, like, at this sidewalk where I'm walking and you know having all these feelings and stuff like that um, when I see this uh, flash of a neon light for me that is maybe for example like when you're in school and when you're in social situations where um, this neon light is it's it's light it's not dark like when you're outside at, at night but it feels artificial in a sense. It's neon. It's not. It's not real light. You know. It. It feels. Everything just feels. Artificial. So it splits the night in a sense, and it touches the sound of silence. But it's artificial. And that's when it says, "And in the naked light, I saw ten thousand people, maybe more, people talking without speak." People hearing without listening, people writing songs that voices never share. No one dare disturb the sound of silence. That is, you see all these people that is talking with each other. Um, 
but they they're not they're not saying what's on their mind no one wants to get their feelings across because you don't want to disturb this artificial um, life or it's like people I could feel when I am depressed and stuff like that that people are not really listening and people are not really caring because it's too much they people enjoy the silence like for example if someone asks you how are you doing they don't want to hear the whole answer because they feel good in the silence and they're used to the silence they don't want to disturb it Fools said I you do not know silence like a cancer grows hear my words that I might teach you take my arms that I might reach you but my words like silent raindrops fell and echoed in the wells of silence so for me I, I've had people in my life who have said to me you know you must speak out about your problems silence will grow like cancer and you will not be able to handle this by your own and hear my words that I might teach you take my arms that I might reach you so for me a lot of the people close to me has always said to me open up about yourself I can help you I will help you, I will be there for you. But every, a lot of the times when when people when I opened up to people close to me they haven't taken it well. A lot of the people have left me after that because they can't handle all my emotions for example like girlfriends who have not I've opened up about my issues and stuff like that and it's been too much for them they haven't been able to handle that so my words have just fell just fell like silent raindrops and for me those people who said say those things then become fools because when they tell me hear my words that I might teach you take my arms that I might reach you they are fools to me it's like no I'm not going to open up to you because you won't like what I have to say and you won't stay And then, you know, the echo in the sound of silence. And the people bowed and prayed to the neon god they made. And that is pretty much that, you know, it's this echo in the, in the, sol in the silence. And people don't like that. And they get scared. So they start bowing and praying to the neon god, which in my sense is the artificial, the, the faces that everyone puts up, because that's what they enjoy and that's what's safe. So they try to make you open up. Once someone does that, they back away, they start bowing and praying to this, to this way of life. And for me, the sign flashed out its warning in the words that it was for me. Now for me, it's like the sign, um, you know, it's this warning of don't, don't let people disturb the sound of silence. So it's a, it's a sign, you know, um, that is flashing out this warning. Um, and that is for me pretty much where 
lyrically it ends for me. Um, I've never really understood the last things about the lyrics because that doesn't really mean anything for me. Um, so pretty much ends, you know, with people wanting to keep this silence and way of life. So for me, I don't want to make this video because I want you guys to feel sorry for me. Um, I've had a really good life. I really have. I've got a really good family. We've had a lot of issues and we still have a lot of issues. There are a lot of things that has come up recently in the family that's been uh, been hard, but also necessary things that have happened. But it's a struggle in a lot of ways, you know. There are a lot of things that is that can sometimes get me very angry about stuff in my family and choices that people in my family makes. But I've had a really good life, I really have, and I have a really good life right now. And this community that we have here, I think, is amazing as well. So I don't want you to feel sorry about me, because that's, there's no reason for that, really. Um, I just wanted to... Uh, wanted to have a more relaxed video and just tell a little bit more about myself at least. So if you enjoy some of these videos then I can, you know, keep doing them. Um, probably won't be as <laughs> low as this one, you know. Um, it's just when I talk about some of these things I just get really, really depressed, uh, <laughs> you know. So, if any of you have any issues and stuff like that, then if you feel like writing to me, I have a Snapchat account. And, or if you want to write me on Twitter, I also have a mail address if you want to talk about stuff. Or if you want to write things in the comments, um, I'm all ears, I really am. I don't really have that many issues with depression anymore, um, but I have a lot of things that I need to work on with myself. There are things that I've done that I need to forgive myself for. There are also things that I need to process that's happened in my life, which I haven't. And I think that's because it's too painful and it just takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, which I don't have. <laughs> I don't really have the time nor the energy to, to process these things. But I will someday. You know, I'm still quite young, so I have the time. Um, but yeah. If you... I really think it's important to, to talk about things, so... You know, if there are any things that you want to talk about, then leave a comment down below. And uh, if you enjoy this video, then uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And click the bell icon to make sure you stay up to date. And give the video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it. And share the video. That's pretty much one of the best ways to support this channel. And that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.